So, today's discussion is on tolerance design. First of all, let us know what is tolerance. Tolerance is permissible deviation from specified value or a standard. Like fabric width, the nominal value could be 1 meter and then the tolerance which could be given is let us say plus 2 centimeter or plus minus 1 centimeter. So, we can have a tolerance like this here plus minus 2 centimeter or 1 centimeter. Similarly, for fabric GSM it could be 200 gram plus minus 5 percent or yarn RKM could be 16 centinewton per text plus minus 1 centinewton. So, the tolerance part could be in the same unit or could be sometimes given in percentage terms also. So, whenever specifications are given, tolerance also needs to be given because it is otherwise impossible to make a fabric which is exactly 1 meter, which will not be possible or a fabric GSM which is exactly 200 gram because the process will have its own variations. There are a lot of reasons why the variation comes and we always try to minimize the variation, but depending upon the capability of the process and the variability that exists in the raw material, there will be always some deviation from the nominal value that we expect in a given parameter. But tolerance are always, uh, no, it may be suggested by a buyer and or by a customer and the producer has to produce goods which will meet the tolerance. So, we will discuss about the designing of tolerance. So, purpose of tolerance design is assignment of tolerance to parts, to assemblies or to processes. If we have to meet the tolerance of the final product, the final product may have many parts and therefore, what will be the tolerances of those individual parts. Like a product may consist of a few fabrics that could be inner layer, outer layer, that could be middle layer, that could be hood. There are, so, these are different parts of the fabrics and if we somebody says that the nominal weight of this uniform or this jacket whatever it is is so much some value x with a tolerance of 4 percent, 5 percent, 1 percent whatever it is. Then uh, when we are trying to manufacture that product it consists of so many different components and we have to also now see ki how much tolerance we should give to those individual parts or components that will contribute to the weight, total weight of that garment, it could be uniform, it could be jacket, whatever it is. So, based on the overall tolerable variations in functional requirements. So, if, if I say functional requirement is the weight, that is weight becomes very, very important in certain cases then the requirement, functional requirement becomes wet and that could be tolerance that will be given to the total weight of it. So, what will be the weight of individual components parts? That is how, how to design that. As we have given an example here that a required weight of a winter jacket is 800 gram plus minus 50 gram. what will be the weight and tolerances of 
inner layer fabric, insulation layer, outer layer, hoods, zippers, because all of them weight of all those individual items is going to contribute towards the total weight of the winter jacket. So, it could be weight, it could be any other property, maybe insulation property or it could be the size, whatever it is. It could be in some cases the strength, some cases it could be air permeability, whatever it is, we need to find out the tolerances of individual components which is contributing to the overall tolerances of the product as a whole. Now, tolerance have different meanings at different stages of design process. First one is customer tolerance. Customer may have explicit or implicit requirements and allowable requirements variation ranges. So, the customer may specify okay, this is what the tolerance he is going to accept beyond which he will not going to accept. If I say the count of a yarn and I say I want to buy 10 tons of cotton yarn from a particular you know, uh, factory and we specify that the cotton yarn count should be 20 is any and they can give a tolerance that 20 is any plus minus 1 any. So, that is the tolerance that is given that is if it is as long as it the it lies the, the, the you know any test that we perform on it and we take we get a value which is varying between 19 to 21 it will be acceptable to me. So, that is what is the tolerance given by the customer and the manufacturer has to meet this tolerance given by the customers. So, he has to design the process so that he can meet it. So, customer tolerance is generally given by the customers. Functional requirement tolerance, customer tolerances are to be mapped into design functional requirements and functional tolerances. So, customer tolerances has to be mapped to actually what is the functional requirements. Customer may say my this fabric sh should last for 2 years at least. Now, when you say it lasts for 2 years that is the customer statement. We have to now map it to the property of the fabric that contributes to the life of a fabric depending upon where the fabric is going to be used and what are the factors which will be responsible in damaging the, the life of the fabric. So, keeping in mind those things we have to decide that what fabric properties that is basic property of the fabric that affects the durability, which could be strength of the fabric, it could be the UV resistance, it could be the abrasion resistance, like that we have to relate. And then we have to find out that what are the tolerances of these properties that we should have when I am trying to design, so that I can meet the customer tolerances. So, functional tolerances has to be derived from the requirement of the customer. Design parameter tolerances to deliver functional requirements with tolerance, the design parameters must be set at correct nominal value. their variation must be within the design parameter tolerances. So, design parameter that we finally, have those parameters what should be the nominal value and how much tolerance we should give to it that is the design parameter tolerance. Like say, say strength of a fabric we know depend upon the ends and peaks per inch. 
So, what should be the exact tolerance in ends and peaks per inch? That ends and peaks per inch becomes my design parameter. With that, I can vary the strength requirement of the fabric in both warp and web directions, and therefore, they become my design parameters. The count of the yarn becomes my design parameter. So, we need to know what is what are the nominal value of this design parameter that means target value that we should try to achieve and how much tolerances we should have there. Now, tolerance development process. Here is a diagram which is representing the development process. One is the first one is customer attribute and customer tolerances that we need to know. The what the customer is looking for? A customer not necessarily a person who has a technical background. So, he may not be able to or he or she may not be able to always specify the requirements in scientific language. So, customer statements which may not be very scientific in nature needs to be translated into a scientific statement that will satisfy the requirement of the customer. So, customer attribute or customer tolerances from there we must go to the next step that is functional requirements and also tolerances of that. Then comes the design parameter requirements as we have already stated earlier. So, once we have the functional requirements and their tolerances we can go to the next step that is design parameter requirements and their tolerances also. After that, what comes is manufacturing process variable and their tolerances. That what is the ultimately I have to manufacture the product and give it to, to the customer. So, after doing the necessary calculation to find out what are the design parameters, now I have to set the machines which is manufacturing the product. So, that I can really satisfy the requirement of the customers. So, that setting of the machine parameters which could be speeds and which could be the other any other machine parameters that you can think of all of them needs to be properly set on the machines and other whatever parameters are there while I am trying to manufacture a product. Speed is maybe one of them, other than we have to we may have some other parameters settings of different you know, organs of the machines. So, there also we need to know what is those manufacturing process variables which are there and how much tolerance we should have, so that the process does not go out of control and keep producing something which is not going to meet the requirement of the customer. So, stages of development is stated here functional tolerance from there we go to the system and subsystem tolerance. Then comes component tolerance and process variable tolerance. So, first we look into the functional tolerances and followed by it we look for system and subsystem tolerances in a product, because a product can be also now I have already discussed it earlier that a product sometimes may have many many subsystem within it. it all depends upon the type of product and therefore, 
functional tolerances and system and subsystem tolerances need to be found out. Then will come the component tolerances are determined and finally, the process variable tolerances are to be determined. So, this is a in the development process these are the stages functional tolerance from there we will go to system and subsystem tolerance then we will go to the various component that we use to manufacture that product each and every component what will be the you know, value what will be the uh, every component has a purpose and therefore keeping in mind that purpose what sort of values we expect which will satisfy the requirement that we need to find out and how much tolerance to be given to that. So, tolerance design involves determination of design parameter tolerances and basically process variable tolerance. These are the two main activity that is design parameters and process variable and their tolerance. This is what we will be most important part in the development of tolerance. So, the tolerance design see there is a higher high level requirement and tolerance and there is a low level requirement and tolerance. Low level requirement means the property it is there basically independent variable that affects a dependent variable that is that depends upon these independent parameters. Now, let us say as an example if I say that if the higher level requirement is the strength of a fabric then the lower level requirement will be strength of the individual yarns. Then another thing could be ends density and peak density. The third thing could be the type of weave whether it is a plain weave or a satin weave or a twill weave. So, they becomes my low level requirements. So, high level requirement depends upon the low level requirement. So, therefore, we can write that y is a function of x 1, x 2 up to x n and these are the basically independent parameters that is going to affect the dependent variable which is y. So, as an example I have taken y as a fabric strength and x s could be as I said count of yarn, tenacity of yarn ends and density of yarn, peak density of yarn, type of weave, you can keep adding them. So, the relationship between these stage is known as a transfer function between higher and lower level parameters, whatever is the you know, form of relationship. Sometimes, some relationship may be available because from the discharge literature we can find it out with how y and x s are related to each other or sometimes we need to you know, do some experiments to find out what is the exact relationship. And there what comes into the picture that when you want to develop a relationship between dependent and independent variable then we take the help of design of experiment. In the design of experiments, we will be able to establish a relationship based on multiple regression. Okay, what sort of relationship exists between these variables dependent and independent. So, assume that this is my transfer function. So, the main task is given the target requirement of y and its tolerance if both of them are given that the fabric strength should be let us say 1.5 kg force 
and the tolerance is plus minus 0.2 kg force. So, tolerance is also given and the target value has been given. We need to find out what should be the tolerances of x i s and what should be not only tolerance is one thing, what will be should be target value of x s also. Both of them especially here we are discussing about tolerance. So, therefore, we are focusing more on tolerance. So, if the tolerance of the output is given to us, how do I find out tolerance of the individual independent parameter that affects the output parameter. So, the aspects of tolerance designs are one is to manage variability. If the tolerance is tight, if we narrow down the tolerance, then we have to have a very strict control on the process. So, any reasons of variability, anything that can affect variability, all those factors needs to be under proper check. Because when you study variability in the properties of a product, then we can also find out to why this variability exists. What is the role of the process on the variability? What is the role of raw material on the variability? Or what is the how the process might get disturbed? So, there are many factors which can affect variability, some of them uh, can be under control and some variabilities also remain uncontrollable. That is something where we have no control on them. So, it happens. So, but variability control becomes very important in tolerance design. Understanding the source of variability and how to control them. Achieve functional requirements satisfactorily and keep design cost low. So, that is also another objective that the design cost should be low. That is, we should not finally, you know, attempt for tolerances which are difficult to achieve and if we try it, cost might go high. So, keeping in mind the cost also, we have to See, see, already you must be knowing that there are some textile mills are there who can maintain the count of yarn within a very narrow limit with 5 percent mustard. At the same time, there are also textile mills which will keep it the you know count variability which will fall into 10 percent of the mustard value. That means, a mill which is producing a yarn, the nominal count may be still same but the variability in one mill will come Worcester standard of 10 percent, the other one is coming at 5 percent. So, why the difference is there? The difference must be because of the processes in the two cases are not under proper, in the one case it is highly controlled process, in the other case it is not at all controlled. And therefore, the differences are observed. And the moment we want to go for, we narrow down the tolerance, the cost is going to be more and more, because we have to have proper process controls. You may need to have more and more sensors, you need to have better machines. So, obviously, cost will go high. So, keeping in mind the cost part also, we have to decide whether it is achievable or not. Now, worst case tolerance, this design is based on worst case scenario. Let y be a function of x 1, x 2, x 3, x n, where 
x1, x2, x3, xn, these are basically lower level parameters and y is basically higher level parameter. That means, y depends upon x1, x2, x3, xn. Let the target value of y is dy and the tolerance limit of y is delta 0. So, y is within the specification if y remains within this limits T y plus delta 0 and T y minus delta 0. Then we say that it is within the specification limit, but at times the tolerance limit may be asymmetric also this can also happen. That is, we may have a situation where it is like this. This side right hand side T y plus delta 0, right hand side T y minus delta dash 0. So, the two sides, the, the two limits of the tolerance on the right hand side and left hand side may not be exactly the same, it may not be plus minus 2, it could be plus 2 minus 1. That kind of like we want to make a fabric and say I want a fabric on 1 meter. But I can tolerate if the fabric becomes shorter by 5 centimeter, but I can tolerate if it is fabric width is longer by let us say 1 centimeter. So, 1 centimeter more than the nominal value is acceptable to me, but on the lower side it should not be 1 centimeter less, it should be just 0.5 centimeter less. So, this is what is called asymmetric tolerance and then many situations it could be like this and it could be also that could be some situations where that could be tolerance only on the lower side or only on the upper side that we can have only upper tolerance or lower tolerance. As an example, let us say I want a company says or a customer says we want a yarn of RKM. 18, 18 centinewton per tex, but I can accept if it is coming within up to 17. So, I am ready to accept if it falls down from 18 to 17 that is 1 centinewton per tex, but the upper limit I do not keep. If you give me 19, 20, 21 I do not it does not matter to me, I will be happy. So, there are situations when that could be only upper limit or could be only lower limit. Similarly, like should I say if I say I need a, uh, a uniformity level of a yarn as an example, it could be for, for that matter any other thing where the value should be let us say booster percentage 13. So, if it is up to 14, I am accepting it, but the lower level I do not keep anything, there is no limit. That is, if you give me from 13 to 12 or 11, 10, I will be happy because lower it is uniform, it will be. The, so, that side I do not keep any limit, on the upper side I keep a limit. So, there are situations where that could be limit only on one side and not on the either upper or lower. This is this could be there in many situations or they could be equal from the nominal value or they may be asymmetric also. All sort of things might be there in the tolerance. So, the target value of x i is T i and the tolerance limit of x i is delta i. And x i is within specification when x i remains in this range. And x i is T i minus delta i greater than or less than T i plus delta i. So, worst case tolerance design rule is that T y minus delta dash 0 should be the minimum of this function 
f x 1, x 2, x 3, x y up to x n, where each x i has is within this limit t plus delta i and this would be not plus, this would be minus. Or it could be t plus delta 0, which is maximum of these values. Now, let us take an example. Let us say target and tolerance of a stack of fabrics. So, we have a let us say a stack of fabrics placed one on the top of the other and each individual fabric is having a thickness x i and it is a stack consisting of let us say may be 10 fabric layers and the total thickness is y. In the garment industry, fabrics are laid one on the top of the other, then they are cut together. So, the total thickness is going to be x 1 plus x 2 x i up to x 10 because we say i is varying from 1 to 10 that is there are 10 layers of fabrics. Let the target value of small x i equal to T i and the tolerance of small x i is equal to delta i. So, this is the target value representing T i and the tolerance is represented by delta i. So, let the target value of y that is the output total is T y and tolerance is delta 0. So, this is this for x i and this is for y and y is a function of x. So, y is a simple function of x in this case because y is going to be sum of the individual layers. So, y is basically this x 1 plus x 2 up to 10 layer. So, T y at the target value of y will be T 1 plus T 2 up T i up to T 10 because these are the target values of x i's. So, T i plus delta 0 if we want the relationship between high and low level tolerances is maximum x 1, x 2, x 3 and up to x 10. So, this is going to be T 1 plus delta 1, T 1 plus delta 2, T i plus delta i, T 10 up to delta 10 and therefore, I can write all T is one side and all tolerances together. So, therefore, Similarly, for the lower level, no sorry, this is the T y plus delta 0 that is the target value of y plus its tolerance and target value of y subtracting the tolerance that this is the tolerance in which the T y is going to lie. So, T y minus delta 0 is going to be the minimum of this and therefore, it is going to be like this. Minimum value basically means it will be T 1 minus delta 1, it will be T 2 minus delta 2, this one will be T i minus delta i, T 10 minus delta 10 and then what we do? We club together all T's on one side and all delta also we club them together and therefore, we are getting Therefore, delta 0 becomes a sum of this delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 3 delta i up to delta 10. That means, the tolerance of the T y which is this total thickness of the fabric is going to be the sum total of tolerances of individual fabrics. So, this is how where it is see what where it is minimum if I write this line here it is basically T 1 minus delta 1 plus 
t 2 minus delta 2 plus we are going like this and going up to then t 10 minus delta 10. This is what we have done. This line is missing here. Next line that put will be that we put all the t's together and all the deltas together. This is the situation. And therefore, we can write that delta 0, this is going to be sum of this or sum of this. So, the tolerance of the stack is going to be sum of individual tolerances of the fabrics. Now, if I take a real example of this, let us say the nominal thickness of a fabric is 0.2 mm. All the fabrics assume to be there of same fabric pieces. So, all of them have nominal thickness 0.2 and tolerance is 0.02. That means, there are some fabrics where the thickness will be 0 0.2 minus 0 0.2. That is, in some cases, the T y could be difference between these two and that is going to be 0.18 mm. And there are some fabrics where it could be the other extreme could be 0 0.2 plus 0.02 and then it could be 0.22. That is what basically it means. That means, I have 10 fabric layers, but the fabric layers all of them their nominal value is 0.2, but the tolerance has been given which is 0 0.02 mm. That means, in the worst case I will have some fabrics of 0.18 mm and in the other worst case that all the fabrics are thicker and then maybe therefore, total each fabrics may be 0.22 mm. These two are the two different extreme scenarios. So, the tolerance limit for the pile of fabrics is going to be sum of the individual tolerances. So, therefore, it will be 0 0.02, 0 0.02 all of them are same in this case. So, there are 10 fabrics, so 10 into 0.02 is going to be 0.2 mm. So, for this stack of fabrics, the tolerance is going to be 0.2 mm and the nominal is going to be 0.2 into 10 that is 2 mm. So, T y will be 2 mm 0.2 into 10 that is 2 mm and delta 0 is going to be 0.2 mm for the stack. This is what we will get. So, we will know that this is what the value we will get. The most of the time we will be interested in the reverse. That is given this, the stack should be of 2 mm thickness because my machine setting is permissible. Well, that machine may be cutting machine can only handle no, the fabric up to mm thickness. Just as an example, I am giving it may be they can handle that till much more, but obviously there is a range in which it will be able to operate. Up to this thickness, it will be able to operate. If I try to go beyond that, the machine will fail. It will not be able to cut the fabrics. So such kinds of situation could be there. Here, for a, as a simple example, we are giving like this that uh, the values could be 2 mm, 0.2 mm. Many times we need to know the reverse way as I said that if this is given to me and this tolerance is given to me, what will be the individual fabric thickness and what should be the tolerance of the individual fabrics. The another example is this, what is this two folded fabrics are to be put inside a packet. From the given data, calculate target dimensions and tolerance of the packet C. So, therefore, let us say as a yes, this diagram I am looking for. So, let us say I have two fabric pieces, 
and they are in folded state one is A the other one is B and I have to now design a packet within which these two fabrics will be inserted and obviously the packet has to be such that this if it is too short it will be very difficult to you know put the fabric inside the packet if it is too large then also within the packet the fabric will move. So, in the packet that we are going to design it should have certain nominal value we should know and how much tolerance is has to be given to it. So, that neither we have difficulty in placing these two folded fabrics inside the packet and not the fabric is going to move too much within the packet. It is as an example we are giving. So, in this case target value of the tolerance of A is given 20 plus minus 1 centimeter and the target value of tolerance of B is given 10 plus minus 1 centimeter. Clearance that we require here is has to be within this range 1 to 6 centimeter. So, how to go about it what should be the, the target value of C and what would be the tolerance. Now, the solution is that the target of C minus delta dash 0 is going to be 1. and because this is 1 centimeter and therefore, 1 is going to be minimum of C minus A minus B. See y is what the clearance is y is C minus A minus B actually C is A plus B plus y where y is the clearance. So, y is C minus A minus B. So, if the tolerance minimum value is 1 is minimum C minus A minus B. So, this is going to be T C minus delta dash C plus 20 plus 1 plus 10 plus 1 that is we are considering them to be maximum value if we consider then this is going to be T C minus delta C minus 21 minus 11 that is going to be equal to 1. and the other one is the T plus delta 0 is going to be 6. So, 6 is going to be maximum of C minus A minus B that that is the upper limit we are putting it. Therefore, it is going to be T C plus delta C minus 20 minus 1 and 10 minus 1 the clearance will be maximum only when these two fabric folded fabrics are minimum. So, 20 minus 1 and 10 minus 1 and therefore, it become T C plus delta C minus 19 minus 9 that becomes my equation 2 and we get 2 equation that is T C minus delta dash C delta dash C is the lower side of the limit is going to be therefore, 33 and T C plus delta C is going to be 34 you have to add them 6 plus 19 plus 9. 1 plus 21 plus 11. From there, if we assume symmetric tolerance limit that delta dash C and delta C are same, in that case we can now solve this equations two equations to find out what is should be my T C value and what should be my tolerance. That is if I want to know T C if since they are same we simply add these two 33 plus 34 divided by 2 that will give you T C 33.5 centimeter and delta dash C similarly we can work it out it will give you 0.5 centimeter. So, that means, the C has to be designed in such a way that is target width has to be 33.5 centimeter and with the tolerance of 0.5 centimeter. That is how we must you know 
manufacture the packet that is C in this case. The other thing that we need will decide now is the statistical tolerance. The objective is to ensure that the high level requirements meet a specification with high probability. And low level cash statistics are considered to be independent random variable as they are made in different unrelated manufacturing process. The different components are made in different manufacturing process by different machines it could be and therefore, they can be all considered to be independent random variables. So, low level cash statistics that is x i s we assume them to follow normal distributions that is the you know, safest way and most of the time that is what we assume and we then move forward. So, x i s are following normal distribution with mean mu i and standard deviations sigma i. High level requirements is also normally distributed with y i that means are normally distributed with a mean mu as standard deviation sigma. So, total variance and process capability also we need to now little bit of understand we said. See process capability is judged in terms of this parameter called C p. capability of the process. How it is that U s l minus L s l divided by 6 sigma that is U s l and L s l are upper and lower specification limits that has been provided by the customer that these are the specification limit and we get we must get the you know the product within these two limits. It could be anything for that matter maybe dimensions could be or it could be weight, it could be anything, any parameter they can say this is the limit. And the process variability which is sigma 6 times sigma if we divide this then the value that we get this is what is known as process capability. If the process is centered that is target value and mean of the characteristics are same. Then C p can be also written as U s l minus T i by 3 sigma or T i minus L s l by 3 sigma process is centered that is target value and mean of a characteristics are exactly same. That situation the C p which is U s l minus L s l by 6 sigma it can be also U s l minus T i or T i what is T i? T i is the target value of x i, x i is the, uh, is the, is the target uh, one parameter is x i, this target value is T i. So, U s l minus T i by 3 sigma that will be should be equal to other way T i minus lower specification limit by 3 sigma. And the difference between these two is what the tolerance is all about delta i. So, it becomes delta i by 3 sigma i for ith parameters or ith lower level uh, parameter. So, C p is delta i by 3 sigma i. If C p is delta i by 3 sigma i, therefore, delta i is going to be 3 C p into sigma i for each low level characteristics x i. That means, 
the tolerance of a lower level characteristics which is x i s tolerance of that is connected to the C p value of the process that is capability of the process. Can the process really capable to give me so much tolerance or not? If somebody claims somebody some says that I can give away you know a suppose I am saying that was the um, that was a machine generally produces a non urban fabric where the C V has been found to be around let us say take a value arbitrary value let us say 10 percent. So, we know that this whatever we do this particular non urban machine always give me a C V of 10 percent. If I know the C V of 10 percent we can find out what is the standard deviation also. Now, therefore, if somebody that means the process is capable to produce that much only if I demand a value of 5 percent then the process will not be able to give me. So, if my customer ask that I need a product where the C B will be 5 percent and if I know that my process can only give at the most 10 percent therefore, we should say that the process is not capable there is no there is no point in taking that order and trying to execute it because we will fail because the process is not capable. So, we must understand ki what is the capability of a process if it is spinning process, weaving process or garment manufacturing process whatever process it is we must have idea the capability of the process. So, this is the relationship between the process capability C p the standard deviation and the tolerance. For high level requirements similarly we can write delta 0 is going to be 3 into C p multiplied by the standard deviations. C p and standard deviation to C p value is the process capability value actually this is this is a part of 6 sigma. So, when C p is 1 we say it is 3 sigma level and this is the corresponding diagram that is you see if this is the process variability then the lower specification limit and upper specification limit are lying at these two points and these two points the distance between these two in terms of sigma scale is exactly 6 sigma. When the distance between that is the difference between L s L minus U s L divided by 6 sigma equal to 1 then we say it is C p value is 1, but sigma value is 3 sigma. Similarly, the next one is 4 sigma. In the case of 1 C p value 1 3 sigma level 0.27 percent of the product will be outside the specification level that basically means 0.27 percent roughly 0.3 percent. If I get the process C p value 1 if it is 1.33 which is equivalent to 4 sigma 0 0.0064 percent is outside the specification limit. C p 1.67 and C p 6 sigma level is this one specification limits and the you see the limit 3 sigma limits of this they are far away. So, specification width is much more and the 3 sigma width of the process is much narrower and therefore, in this situations hardly any defective material will be produced that will go beyond the specification limit because specification limits are so wide in this case in, case in comparison to the process. So, this is the you know, the relationship between C p and sigmas are stated here. 
like this. So, CP2 is something very, very low defects that will be produced, which is almost difficult to achieve, but many you know, high end industries are trying to achieve this value. In uh, our case, even a CP value of 1 itself is, is something very good, but usually it would be sometimes CP may go below 1, it could be 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, so that we produce you know, actually more defective materials, something which will go beyond the specification limit. Anyway, that needs a detailed discussion on uh, six sigma. That will have some understanding of six sigma should be important here. Now we are going for this linear statistical tolerance. That is, if y is a function of x1, x2, x3, and xn, and let us say that function is stated like this: a linear function. That is y equal to a n x 1 a 1 x 2 a 2 x 2 sorry this will be a 2 x 2. In that case the variance of y will going to be a 1 square sigma 1 squared a 2 square sigma 2 squared a i square sigma i squared a n square sigma n square. This formula is important to know in the case of linear statistical tolerance. That is, we, ex we are assuming a linear relationship between y and x, but many a times it could be non-linear. So, uh, that will be you know, also that can be tackled in case of non-linear relationship, but to make the case simple we are assuming that it is a, a linear relationship. So, these are x i's are low level requirements and these are high level requirement y's. That means, y is a function of x or otherwise you can say y is a dependent parameter and x i's are independent parameter. y depends on x, x does not depend upon y. Now, with this if I go use the you know that examples fabric stack where we have we have seen there are 10 fabrics stacked together. The same example we are coming back. Nominal thickness is 0 0.2, tolerance is 0 0.02 mm and the process capability let us say is 1.33, which is a very good process. If CP is 1.33, that means most of the fabrics which are produced will be meeting this requirement. Only very few that percentage has been given earlier. Uh, it will be equivalent to almost 4 sigma level and therefore, very few percentage of fabrics will be defective. So, thickness of the fabric stack as is a linear function, required target value of the fabric stack y is going to be 2 mm and delta 0 is going to be 0 0.2 mm. So, required C p suppose I need 2 which is a very, very high value. So, suppose I as example I take it to, is the process capable enough to meet the specifications or not. If that is the question that is raised. So, these are the requirements given and this is what the fabrics that we will use it to make a stack. So, fabric manufacturing process has a capability of C p 1.33 and the stack should have a you no know, give me a thickness of 2 mm and with a delta 0 value tolerance 0 0.2 mm, but C p requirement is going to be 2. Is it attainable or not? Solution for this is going to be that since delta i is 3 C p sigma i that we have seen. Therefore, the standard deviation of the x i is, is going to be delta i by 3 C p. So, delta is 0 0.02 given already 
3 CP value of the process is 1.33 and therefore the sigma value is going to be 0 0.005. The variability in y is a 1 sigma square a 2 sigma sigma 2 square like that this formula we have stated and if sigma is at all same in this case 0 0.005 and how many of them are there all a 1s are basically 1 because y we have seen is x 1 plus x 2 by x 3 that means this constant a 1 a 2 a 3 they are all 1. So, it is going to be 1 square into 0 0.005 square plus 1 square into 0 0.005 square like that it will go up to n is going to be 10. Hence, this value is going to be 10 into 0 0.005 square. So, this value is going to be this value 0 0.000025. That for sigma of y is going to be square root of this which is going to be 0 0.0158. And C p of y is therefore, going to be C p is delta 0 by 3 sigma. So, in this case it is going to be 4.21. So, what we see here the calculated C p is much more than C p requirement of 2. So, the process is capable to achieve this in this case. It will be able to meet the requirement. It will let the tolerance of the fabric stack is reduced to 0.1 mm. In that case, we will find that C p is going to be 2.1, even now C p calculated is more than C p required 2. So, it would still that if we reduce the tolerance. So, tolerance earlier was how much? 0 0.02 mm. This was the tolerance. If this tolerance is changed to even 0.1 mm, 0.1 mm, so earlier it was very tight tolerance. No, this time if we increase it to 0.1 even, that means we have reduced. There the other example that we have chosen, where we have also given now the. So, target values all everything remains same only what is extra here the C p value was not there earlier. So, we say the C p is 1.33 for fabric A and B. C is A plus B plus Y and in this case the requirement for this clearance is between 1 to 5 centimeter. So, solution if we go process will be mostly similar. The target value of C let us say T C, tolerance are delta dash C and delta C, y is between 1 and 5 already stated. So, the midpoint of the clearance is going to be 1 plus 5 by 2 that is 3 and E of y is going to be E of C minus E of B expected value of B expected value of uh, a this would be not B, this would be A, because we know that Y is C minus B minus A. So, expected value of Y as the middle point of Y is going to be how much 5 plus 1 by 2 that is 3. So, 3 is going to be T c minus 20 minus 10, T t the nominal value of b is 20, the nominal value of a and so b is I think 10. So, this is actually I think nominal value was 10, this was 20. So, it will be 20 minus 10 or I think it could be 10 minus 20 whatever we are basically minus 20 minus 10 both will come here.
and therefore, the target value of c is going to be T c is going to be 20 plus 10 plus 3 that is 33. That is c target value has to be or nominal value has to be 33. The units are same centimeter. We can Should be like this. Uh, if we rewrite it now, okay. From there, we go to the next page now. So we have found out the target value of the packet that is C. Now we still need to know what should be the tolerance? That calculation is still left. So, C p has been stated to be 1.33 for, for the process which are folding the fabrics and making it 20 centimeter and 10 centimeter for fabric A and B. So, in that process also the nominal value is 20 or 10, but this process capability is that C p value 1.33 that means sometimes we get it 20 plus something, 20 minus something. So, what is the standard deviation of that process? Suppose folding of fabric is done by some machine, it is done automatically by some machines and that machine folding machine is having a process capability of 1.33. So, delta A is delta, so sigma A is going to be delta A by 3 C p. So, if we go by this, this tolerance has been given to be 1 stated, it has been given 3 into C p value 1.33. Therefore, I find out that the standard deviation of A is going to be 0.25 and therefore, similarly standard deviation of B is also going to be 0.25, because the tolerance of B is also same like tolerance of A, both are plus minus 1 centimeter. Now, variance of clearance y is going to be how much? y is a function of a, b, c and therefore, variance of y is going to be sigma square a plus sigma square b plus sigma square c. That is equal to sigma a we already know, sigma b we already know both are 0.25, it will be going to be 2 into 0.25 whole square plus sigma square c, sigma square c is something which we still do not know what is the standard deviation for the dimension of the packet which is still unknown to us. But the for the y the required C p has to be 2. If it is 2, then the standard deviation required of that process will be how much? Again we use similar formula, sigma is going to be delta 0 by 3 C p delta 0 has been given to be 2, because it is the summation of delta 1 and delta 2 or delta A plus delta B, which is going to be 1 plus 1 that is A is going to be 2. And therefore, 3 C p, 3 into C p taken as 2, this value is going to be 0 0.33. And therefore, the now, if sigma for the packet that is C is 0 0.33, how much is sigma square? 0 0.33 square that is going to be 0 0.1089. Sigma square A as sigma square B is going to already seen 2 into 0 0.0, 0 0.25 whole square, it will give you a figure 0 0.125. Now, therefore, what happens is that this sigma square is not going to be sigma a square sigma b square plus sigma c square. This sigma square is less than current sigma square a plus sigma square b and therefore, there will be no feasible sigma c and delta c unless the tolerance of a and b are changed. 
we are not getting a solution. Because in one side we want this, this, this should be satisfied. And if the value of sigma, variance of y, this is basically not y, this is the variance of y. So, this will be sigma square y. If that value is 0 0.1089 and the right hand side if summation of these two is 0 0.125, then sigma square c has to be then negative. The variance cannot be negative and therefore, it will not give you any feasible solution there is no not possible. So, what we need that we need to change the tolerance of a and b that is this tolerance is of a that is delta a and delta b has to be changed otherwise is not going to give you any solution. So, let us assume that delta a sigma a sigma b sigma c are all same because sigma c was coming negative on the previous case. Now, let us say that they are all same the variability in a b and also c in terms of standard deviations are same. Therefore, sigma square is going to be 3 sigma a square and they are all equal to 0.33 square and this will be how much wait a minute no sigma square we have found out to be already 0.1089 if they are all same, then this is equivalent to 3 sigma square. So, 3 sigma square is 0 0.1089 and therefore, sigma a has to be how much 0 0.19 and same is going to be the sigma b and sigma c all of them is going to be same. So, that means, sigma a is 0 0.19 sigma is also going to be 0 0.19 and sigma c also going to be 0 0.19. So, how do we derive it here? Now, we are assuming there to be same sigma square is the already we have found out in the previous slide that is 0 0.10189. So, 0 0.1089 is equal to 3 sigma a square and sigma a we find it out and that same thing becomes sigma b and that becomes sigma c also. If the C p is still 1.33 for a, b and c, then delta a, delta b, delta c is 3 C p sigma a that is 3 into 1.33.19 that is 0 0.78, 0 0.758. So, these are the tolerances for a, b and c. So, one is the tolerance the other one is the standard deviations. From there now, we can verify whether the results are coming correct or not. The clearance in the present case, in the worst case, up to you know, assuming that the sigma a, sigma b, sigma c are same, T c we have already found out target value of c already we have found out that is T c equal to 33. Considering the smallest size of a and b, how much is going to be the clearance y? T c minus 0 0.76, 20 minus 10, 10 minus 1 that is going to be 32.24 minus 19 minus 9 4.24. Considering the biggest size of a and b y is going to be T c plus 0 0.76 minus 20 plus 1 minus 10 plus 1. So, this is be 32.24 minus 19 minus 9 this will give you a value 4.24 that is the clearance of y in the one worst case is 4.24. In the other worst case, 
we are assuming the biggest size of A and B. So, we are assuming 20 plus 1, 10 plus 1, 33.76 minus 21 minus 11 that gives you a figure 1.76. What was the requirement? Requirement was y should be between 1 and 5. So, in this case, you see the worst case scenario, the y value in one case may come 4.24 or it can come 1.76. So, it is greater than 1, but less than 5. So, it is then fulfilled. So, the requirement is now fulfilled. So, with this, we you know, close this particular uh, uh, discussion which is on tolerance design. So, in many you know in uh, the tolerance design in some cases where the textile products will be you know will have some critical use especially there it will be very very important. In many cases it may not be that important because we can have white tolerances also because it is not a life threatening product. But there could be some products where it could be have an implication on the life of a person. In those situations, meeting tolerances or designing as per tolerances become extremely important. Okay. With this, let us close today's session. Thank you.